Guys, we are done. I am absolutely delighted with how it looks. I don't think this room's ever looked better. Retro ghetto. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's vlog. We are kicking off where the last episode finished. So I'm still in Briley Hill. I've just finished at the episode that you would have all seen. How are you, man? So I'm kicking this off. Just seen somebody that watches the channel. I'm just kicking this off now where the last episode finished, um, coming out of old school gaming. So I'm currently in Briley Hill, I'm going to look in a few charity shops. There are lots of great video game stores in this part of the world. So whilst I'm here, we're going to go and take a look at a few other video game shops. Let's go. Okay, so there's nothing really happening in the charity shops around here. It's unsurprising when you so many great used video game stores nearby that there's not going to be an abundance of it in charity shops close to them. Um, but as I say, there are some fantastic video game stores around here. I'm going to go and try and see Dana over at Hidden Chess Gaming. I've not been there yet, so hopefully he'll be open. We'll go and see him. And then, of course, we'll be going to one of my favourite video game stores, Vintage Gamer, whilst we're in this neck of the woods. So, yeah, loads of great hunting to come on this vlog. Okay, so I've made the 10 minute drive from Briley Hill to Hales Owen. Uh, we're about to go and check out Vintage Gamer. Love this place. Uh, sadly, Hidden Chess Gaming is only open on a Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so we weren't able to go today, but we will go and see Dana there, um, hopefully in not too distant future on one of these vlogs, but let's go and see what Nick's got of Vintage Gamer. How are you, mate? You all right? Good, thank you, mate. This room never ceases to amaze me. <laughs> I'm shocked by it every time I come in. Should have used it by now. The games, mate. See these very often anymore, the official Nintendo cartridge holders. Very cool. Retro Ghetto. Okay, so I decided to have an Xbox night. I started playing Blur after a lot of you guys recommended it in the comments. And it's exactly as you all said, it's an arcade racer with sort of like Mario Kart like uh, elements to it. Really good fun. Got the Xbox light going. Green, of course. And I've just put Alice Madness Returns. I'm trying it on the Xbox One X. Um, heard a lot of good things about this. As I said, I picked that up recently um, at one of those pawn shops that you saw in a previous vlog. So, yeah, looking forward to getting into this and seeing if it's as good as everybody says it is. Okay, so I am probably about an hour and a half, two hours into this game now, and I'm actually really enjoying it. I can see why people say a lot of good things about it. It's not exactly what I expected. I thought it was going to be a bit more puzzle based, but it just seems to be a bit more of like a very macabre action platformer. Uh, I'm really enjoying it. I'm enjoying the mechanics. I've unlocked a few different weapons and things like that. And yeah, it's really good fun. Um, I've had a quick look online. It can take about 12 to 14 hours to finish the story. So um, if I enjoy it as much as I'm enjoying it so far, I'll probably get this one finished. But yeah, definitely recommend it. Retro Ghetto. Okay guys, we are back in the 3.0 and I am nothing if not consistent. Consistently, my room is a mess after recording and editing, uh, of which I've just got done with the uh, old school gaming video, which you guys hopefully will have already seen on Wednesday if you haven't, link in the description. But spoiler alert, these are the things that I picked up. Uh, really happy with him, I've got to find a place for Marvin. But yeah, it's doubly important this week that I get everything tidied up because I'm hoping to do quite a few improvements on this episode, on this vlog. I'm hoping to uh, finally put together my plans to uh, make some changes 
and some improvements, as I say, to the Retro Get 3.0. So we'll be getting to that later in the week. Um, as I say, I did, as you've seen, visit uh, Vintage Gamer, which, you know, if I'm going in the area, if ever I go to Old School Gaming, I have to visit Vintage Gamer and the other way around because they're both so closely, uh, they're both so close in proximity and they're both such fantastic shops. Uh, whilst I was there, I found this, um, Fear 2. You know me, guys, me and Steelbooks, yeah, we go together like... Uh, tea and cake. Shout out to Mrs. Ghetto, by the way, for the pistachio and raspberry. Oof. Anyway, um, I had to see, I'd never seen this before, and the reason being is, it's because it's an American copy, NTSC, um, we never got the sleeve cover over here, I don't think, but um, this will play on uh, all region PS3s, and yeah, um, just thought it was a nice thing to pick up, so shout out to Nick at Vintage Gamer for doing me a fantastic price on that. Uh, and then you've probably seen some of the footage of Charity Shop Finds. Uh, first thing I wanted to show is, yet again guys, another box set DVD find. I think this was about £1.50, this is £7 trading I think. I'll pop it up on the screen now. Um, sealed so I ain't got to worry about them taking it or not taking it. Yeah, always, always, always check box sets. Um, so nice little bit of trade value in that one. Um, and then I had a pickup of some games. Um, I think these were a pound each, just a pound each. Um, I grabbed a few. Uh, don't have this in the collection, don't know anything about it. Really fun game, but I recently picked it up. Um, there's not loads of trading value on these, but they're worth picking up, and I'll get to that as to why in a moment. But yeah, Grand Theft Auto 4, The Last of Us, which we'll get to. Never heard of this game. Elex on the Xbox One, and then uh, Liberty City Stories. But basically, the trading on these two pretty much paid for the whole bundle. So the other ones I've only got like a pound or so trading. It's just pure trading profit if I don't add them to my collection. Uh, I picked up The Last of Us because obviously I'm loving the TV show as I know so many of you guys are as well. Of course I already own this but I couldn't leave it behind for like a pound. Um, I thought there might be somebody watching that's enjoying the TV show, thinking about playing the game and has never got around to it. I'll give this away. Um, as we did last week with the PS3 stand of which we'll get to that giveaway later on in the vlog. Um, anybody wants this, let me know in the comments, just say you'd like uh, a copy of The Last of Us. UK based please, make sure you're subscribed, help a brother out. And uh, yeah, again I'll do a further draw next week. And where I can guys, I'll keep trying to give things away on you know every vlog. Um, as and when I find things relevant to give away. So that's that. So that's all my charity shop stuff. Or is it actually, it's not. I also found this, which as you can see I've been watching. Uh, this Rambo DVD trilogy, no value in it really, about 20 pence more than I paid for it, which was a pound. But I bought this to watch it, um, yeah, so that was just a nice little find. And here we go, so, after the Games to Invest in video that I put out, what is now a couple of weeks ago, I managed to find a copy of a Murta. I'd already pre I'd already ordered this on eBay prior to the video, but it hadn't arrived in time. Um, so yeah, I've now got this copy of a Murta. Let me know in the comments if you pick this up or any other games that I highlighted in that video. And another one that I was able to find on eBay was this triple pack. As I said, there was only one in stock at CEX. I left it for one of you guys that watched the video, but uh, you know I had a major case of FOMO, um, so I took to eBay, made sure I got a copy of this. And uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing this one. Definitely think this is going to go up in value. Um, so yeah, definitely one for you guys to pick up if you should see it on your game hunts. Right, okay, so, um, quickly outline what I've got planned for the week. I am going to be, as I say, doing some big improvements here in the Retro Ghetto. I've got so much stuff, I've got piles and piles of games. There's also a separate pile of games that I'm not showing because I'm gonna make a future video on it. Uh, there's all sorts of stuff that needs a new home, including Marvin, of course. Oh man, I shot Marvin in the face. What? So yeah, the first job is to get all this stuff tidied up. Um, I am determined this week to finish Cuphead. I love that game, but it's time now. I've got right towards the end, I've got to get it done. So hopefully we'll get that ticked off the list. Um, and then I'd like to continue playing, uh, where is it? Alice, Madness Returns, I really enjoyed uh, the couple of hours I spent with that. So I'll probably be cracking on with that once I get Cuphead finished. But uh, yeah, um, there's loads to be getting on with this week. It's gonna be another stacked vlog. Um, I'll see you soon. Simple things in life, eh? Okay, I told myself no matter what happens this evening, I am finishing Cuphead. This is the final boss, the devil. 
This is the closest I've come. I've been at it for about two, two and a half hours. I don't know, I'm not as confident as I was before I started playing that I'm getting it done tonight. I'm gonna keep going. Hopefully tonight's tonight. Um, I've loved this game, but I'm ready for it to be done now because yeah, it's just one of them. This will be one of my proudest game achievements, getting this game finished. But I really enjoyed playing uh, this game the other night and I kind of really want to get my teeth into it and play through it, but I'm not gonna allow myself to do that until I finish this because I've got too many games on the go currently. So. I'm fully focused on getting this devil beat, getting Cuphead beat, and yeah, patting myself on the back, I think. Just a little bit more to go. So close yet so far. The very next go. Ah! They're getting closer. Come on! It's... I've not even got any words. It's breaking me. <laughs> I've done it. Oh my days. Right, I swear to God. You know when you tell yourself it's the last time? I told myself a couple of times, this is the last time. But this time, that was it. I genuinely meant it. It was the last time. I'd already semi started switching off the room. I was having one more go and I was calling it a night. And I did it. And do you know what? I didn't just do it, I smashed it. I played the perfect game. Like, I wish I'd recorded it somehow. That was the best, what, three minutes of my adult gaming life. Like, Honestly, I've never professed to be good at video games. I think I finished it with like a couple of lives left. Oh my god. What a game. Only video games can make you feel like this. I'm elated. It's almost midnight. I don't think I'm going to be going to sleep. I need to calm down. <laughs> Reminds me of my Beef for 2010. <laughs> I'm going to be staring at the ceiling tonight. <sighs> Guys, I'm so happy. In a bit. Retro ghetto. Okay, so we're all pretty much cleaned up. As you'll see, this pile is still here. Um, I've run out of polish, I'm gonna buy some tomorrow. Then I've got to go through all these games, de-stick them, get them clean and ready to go on what will hopefully be new shelves. I'm probably gonna to nip to Ikea later on in the week, which we'll record on this vlog to get all the improvements done. And I've still got to do the old shelf hack with a few more shelves, but as we saw on last week's vlog, I did pick up the um, trunking to be able to get that done. Uh, yeah, so not a game in a head, and that's definitely not another cup of tea, and definitely not another piece of pistachio and a raspberry cake. Okay, so it's evening in the ghetto, and we are kicking off with a couple of pickups. Uh, a friend of mine, Carl, went to a charity shop recently, and he asked me if I wanted any of the games, or all a pound each. This is a game I've never heard of, I don't have it in my collection. CX is selling this for £4, so... I'm assuming it's at least half a decent game. As always, let me know in the comments if you've ever played Quantum Theory, but that's just one from my 360 collection. Nice one, Carl. And right now, the most important addition is my Mr. Sheen. You can tell the missus has been shopping. I'd have got the Audi one. <laughs> I'm not bloody made of money. <laughs> but what that means is that we can crack on with de-stickering and cleaning all these games ahead of tomorrow. Because tomorrow, guys, we're going to Ikea. We're going to go and buy some things to uh, make changes in the games room as I keep alluding to. Here's the first pile I'm going to go through. Um, so yeah, pretty much going to spend my evening uh, catching up on some YouTube. I've currently got Radical Reggie on. And we're going to be cleaning through some games whilst doing what I do, drinking tea. So I'm busy cleaning my games, as you can see, getting the stickers off. And I got to the copy of Command & Conquer that I picked up in that amazing charity shop um, day that we had on the, I think it was a couple of vlogs ago now. I just remembered I already own this game. So I just thought I'd check the um, condition of the both. And I found this <laughs> inside it. I have never seen this before. What? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I mean, what is the relevance? <laughs> yeah, different time, man. You can't imagine getting that with a game there, can you? 
Okay, so two powers done, one power left to go. Guys over at Toy Division are helping me get through it. Link in the description below. Make sure you go and check them out. But whilst I was doing it, I almost forgot how much I love this. Any excuse to share this again, I've just come across this. Look at that tire tread. I mean, three pound, that might be the best three pound I've ever spent. That's better than three chicken mayos at McDonald's. Okay, so just cracking on with Alice Madness Returns and this is everything done. So this is all the stuff, if anyone's interested, that I'm going to be adding to the shelves. All cleaned, de-stickered. This is all the stuff that um, has already been shown on vlogs and different videos. It's going to be added into, as I say, the shelves and the new things that I'm going to be adding tomorrow. Um, I've got a separate pile, but that's for things... Well, I've got a CEX pile, and I've got a uh, a pile of things that haven't yet been shown on the channel that I've got plans for with future videos. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to get on the IKEA website now, um, play a bit more Alice Returns, plan exactly what I'm going to buy tomorrow. Uh, next time you see me, guys, we'll be heading to IKEA, hopefully, for a nice breakfast. Good night. Okay, so it's about 11 o'clock at night. But my brain's sort of whirring and I'm sort of planning ahead and thinking what I'm going to do with these improvements. So basically we need more space. We need more shelf space to get more video games in this room and it still looks neat and tidy. Obviously it's not an option with this wall. I love how this wall looks. Um, you know, having the Super Nintendo wall and then it sort of perfectly houses uh, my Street Fighter figures underneath it. And obviously then there's all these uh, half Billy bookcases uh, underneath there. So there's not really much I can do with that wall. So obviously it leaves this back wall. Now, what you can do is you can buy risers for the Billy Book cases. Um, so you can buy these extension pieces which go on, a pro I think it's 35 centimeters. So you're basically adding a another good shelf, uh, maybe slightly more, but obviously I do have spare shelves knocking about if, if needs be. But for all intents and purposes, you're gonna sort of have another one of these added onto the top. Now my initial plan, was to just do these two. So to do this one, and this one here. This is actually a full size billy, but it's cut. So if you sort of look behind there, no it's not, I'm telling a lie. This is a half billy. So I think you can get a half extension. I'll have to double check, but I think you can. So my original plan was to put a f an extension on here, an extension on there. The issue is then what would happen with the Rugrats standee, but I think it would still work. It would just get bought forward a bit and it would just go sort of more towards the ceiling because at the moment there is quite a bit of clearance and obviously as you bring the standee this way, it will then give you more uh, room towards the ceiling. I'm not doing a good job of explaining that, but I think it will still work. The reason I didn't want to do this one is because of Master Chief. I like the way Chief stands now with his guns and I thought to myself it might be too high um, if I extended that one. However, let me show you guys what I did. So we're using the PS5 uh, stand, of which I'm going to be doing the draw for the giveaway on this video. Stay tuned for that. One second, we'll pop you down. Okay, so I think this is, bear in mind, this is, I think, taller than 35 centimetres, but it just gives us an idea of what it's going to look like. Now I think that looks pretty cool because what it does is it raises one arm but it makes it look like he's shooting, it's like a shooting pose, right? And there's nothing there anyway. So I think sort of as you walk in the room, it just creates more of an action shot. It makes it even more of a feature of Master Chief. So you can imagine now we're gonna have two larger extensions on those shelves, a half extension on that one, which is gonna give us a lot more shelf space um, for games and toys and whatever else I decide to put in the shelves which just adds to the longevity and lifespan of this room because it's going to be a long time guys before we start talking about 4.0s and 3.5s <laughs> I think my missus would leave me if I started talking about that yet so we've got to find more room so I think that's a plan I think we're going to put Master Chief's arm up the issue is these things are so expensive. IKEA is not the cheap solution it used to be. Just for the simple add-on pieces that go on top of these, it's £25 each. That one will end up being cheaper, but I mean, 
you're going to be looking at 70 quid, which is a lot of money um, to add three shelves. But I mean, it is what it is. We've got no expense spared thus far, so we don't really have too much choice. So that's definitely something I'm going to be looking at tomorrow. There's a few other options and ideas and things I want to check out whilst we're in Ikea. We're going to have a good detailed look around after we've had some breakfast, see what we can find in there. A more long-term solution as well, uh, something I've spoke about before, is this. So what I've thought about doing is flipping this whole case around and having it like a library. So having two back to back. So this, what you'll see here is just the two sides. And then you would have one side that would look like this. And then there'd be another side that would look like, you know, full of games. And it would almost split the room a bit more. It would sort of come out, out to sort of here. The issue would then be, what would I do with these drawers? What would I do with my God of War statue? And would it sort of hide my kiosk and other things? That's definitely something for another day when we need to sort of further uh, add more space down the line because it's not something that's imperative right now. Um, I think this should suffice for the time being. So yeah, I think this is going to work. I'm quite happy with Master Chief like that. I think it looks really cool. And like I say, I just think it sort of adds to uh, Chief's pose. So yeah, really happy with that. Glad I decided to have a look at this before we went down. And uh, yeah, next time I will be seeing you on the way to Ikea. Okay, here we are, my second home. <laughs> I lost count of how many times I had to come here when I was building the 3.0. But yeah, we're here bright and early. Um, I'm gonna have a good look around because whilst I know what I want for the jobs that I want to do, I think there's quite a few things that could probably catch my eye that could further improve the room more so. So yeah, I'm gonna have a good look around. But the first stop, of course, is breakfast. Feel better for that. Full belly, ready to uh, tackle this store. Let's see what we can find. Okay, so these are what we want. So you can see that obviously, <clears throat> how much extra height it gives you. However, I need a smaller one for the smaller unit, but the unit's not this small. These are like the really thin ones, but I need one of these for the ones that are half the size of that. Hmm. Uh, it must be that, you know, because look, 40, 80. I don't know, it's some kind of optical illusion. That doesn't look half the size of that. But must be. I think I've got a bit of an obsession with lighting. I really don't need any more lighting options in the room, but these kind of tall ones, not this one, because I want one that goes like in the corner. You can get them that sort of sit at a 90 degree angle at the bottom and then go right to the corner of the room. I'd like one that can go behind the Master Chief. One that you can change the colours of and it just light up and sit behind Chief. Um, I'll have to have a look online, but yeah. I'll, lighting always catches my eye. Is it just me? Right, let's get out of here. Okay, job done. In and out in, what, 40 minutes? Full breakfast, got what I needed, in and out. This is why I always say, come on your own. Come on your own. If I'd come with the missus, I'd be halfway around, I'd be looking at plants or a new sofa we don't need, and we'd be on about a third argument. <laughs> I'm joking, but still, come on your own. Get in, get out. Let's get back to the ghetto, build this stuff, and let's make the room better. Okay, guys, so we are back in the ghetto and I've got all the stuff that I need from Ikea. But before I show you that, I nipped into the charity shop on the way home and I picked up a couple of games. I've got Age of Empires on the PS2. I've got this big limited edition box of the Surge on Xbox One. It's a bit tatty, but I mean, for £1.50, I wasn't going to leave it behind. Um, so yeah, a couple of games and bought a steering wheel. I was sort of on the fence about this. I wasn't sure about buying it. But the reason I did is this is compatible with PS4, PS3, and Xbox One, which is the consoles I tend to play my races on. As much as I'm buying Xbox 360 arcade racers, where I can, I like to take advantage of the backwards compatibility and play them on the Xbox One. It's one of them ones that's got the uh, the flappy paddles, as I said, on Top Gear. Um, I think it's a half decent one by the looks of it. These are sell sold new for like £90. Um, currently selling used for 45 as you can see, I spent 15. It's the num score one. But yeah, besides it being compatible for all the consoles I play my races on, 
I also saw that CEX are giving £23 trading, so I can't really lose. The way I see it is, I'll have a week or so, it's fun with it, if it's not something I want to continue with. Because obviously it's space, isn't it? It's housing, things like this in the room. Um, if it's not for me, then I'll trade it in and make, what, £8 trading profit. So yeah, can't really lose. Uh, decent find. Now, let's crack on. In all my years of building IKEA furniture, I've never known them get something wrong, but on this occasion they have. If you look at this, they want you to build it so that the screw holes are showing on top. Now, why would I want that ugly piece with the writing on it, screw holes on it, to sit on top that's visible? It makes no sense. So I had to kind of change the plans a little bit, flip this over. You can still pretty much do everything that you need it to do, I think, like this. I just don't understand why they would think you want screw holes and factory printing on display. Okay, so quick update, and I've got the first two on. Um, if you're wondering what that is, there's actually a socket down there, if it'll focus. Yep, um, plug socket down there, which obviously is inaccessible. So what I've done is I've screwed the extension pack to this so I can um, have access to what, six more plugs? So this is great. I don't think the Rugrat standee is gonna be able to fit back in. Um, which opens up the door for loads of other things, to be honest. I've got uh, another banging horse awesome and CRT TV. Uh, I've got statues, I've got standees. We're gonna get to all that, because obviously I've got to mess around filling these and stuff like that first. Um, there's gonna be a lot of rearranging to get stuff on these shelves. Um, I haven't screwed them in yet, I'm just sort of playing around with them, putting them into position. So that leaves this next one, which is here. Now I'm gonna build it and see what it looks like, but these are actually bigger than the um, PS5 stand box that we tested it with last night. So what I think it'll mean is, I think Master Chief's arm will end up like pointing upwards towards the ceiling. Um, it's hard to really know exactly until I do it. So I'm gonna build it now, have a look um, and see if I wanna go ahead and put all three on. Um, I don't know if it'd look odd just having the two and then a gap. Let's have a look. Uh, this isn't going too well. Okay, so, step back a bit. I think that looks okay. It's got one good in the air, ready for business. Ideally, I wouldn't have encroaching on the window, but I mean, it's so rare that that blind's open anyway. And ultimately, guys, we had to make some more space, right? It's important that we've got space to grow. Um, I think it almost frames the room a bit better with it kind of his arm pointing out that way. Also, with a little bit of manipulating, I've been able to get my Rugrats back up there. Uh, I've not put it properly exactly as I want it yet because obviously I've still got to screw these down, but yeah, I'm really happy with that. We've got loads more space with which to grow. That looks like what you would buy from a store. Should have been Look a at all this right floor space. So many robots in here, so many activities. It's filled the room again without making it look crowded because that's what it's all about. It's about utilizing all the space but without it looking sort of messy. Obviously, it does at the minute, but hopefully, by the end of this vlog, I'm going to get everything sorted out all the shelves revamped, all filled in, everything tidied up, and get the room looking better than ever. Okay, guys, so not that you can probably tell, but I've been at it for a few hours. Um, shelf management, yeah, it's no joke. Obviously, it's a massive game of Tetris. You know, you move one thing, you've got to think about all the other things that are going to be moved. And I've made a start, but then the shelves are quite an awkward height. So then trying to find something that fits in the gap above that. The plan would be to have all my PS2 running across there. Ultimately, I'd like all Super Nintendo running across here. So all the sort of lower base Super Nintendo games. I think it would just make sense to have the SNES games uh, on the top of these shelves, being as it is obviously the Super Nintendo wall. Um, but yes, a lot of trial and error. Um, as I say, it doesn't look like I've done much, but I've added quite a few games that I cleaned up last night. And guys, I almost forgot to show you the gym. If you remember on last week's vlog, I took that trip out to pick this up. So this is for pull-ups, dips, ab crunches, etc. Picks up 30 quid, which is an absolute bargain. I went over 100 new. This exact model selling second hand for like 80. So yeah, well worth the trip for that. Let me finish this session. Guys, I've got to share this. My missus has just said to me, 
Why don't you put them like this? I'm trying to fill that gap. Oh, Have you ever seen? Oh, no. I've never seen anything. It's offending my eyes. You can't put gain. Just no. Um, I don't know who you are anymore. Stop it. Retro ghetto. Okay, so it's a new day. And look at it with fresh eyes. I love what we've done. I love extending the units. I'm happy with the Bugret Sandy. Happy with Chief's new pose. My issue is, whilst the PS2 games do offer some nice uniformity, and don't worry about the gap at the top, we will find something for that. <laughs> it definitely won't be Mrs. Retro Ghost's uh, opinion, but we'll figure something out. But, I like the uniform uniformity, but PS2 games are boring, right? It's such a boring thing to look at and have on display as soon as you come in the room. I think I'd be better off having the row of PS2 games somewhere on this wall, so it's not something that you immediately see. Uh, I do enjoy looking at the 360 games, I like the green, and they're just a lot more interesting cases to look at. But I've got so many 360 games that that wouldn't house it. And the PS2 set currently fits perfectly, like to the game. I know you could argue, well I can't grow, but there's a few games in here that I've just got out of bundles and it's just not worth me getting rid of. Um, there's some really nice games in here, but it's the odd one that I don't care about, I'm trying to find one. Pro Rally 2002, for example. So let's say if I get a nicer game, I'll probably just push that back in, hide it behind there and just replace it with a nicer game. Um, so that's sort of how I'd work around uh, adding to the PS2 set. <sighs> I've been sat in this stool staring at these shelves for longer than I care to admit, but think I've got a plan. It's key that you know what you're doing before you start doing it, right? So as I say, I want to get my Super Nintendo games up here. So these two shelves are the right size. So what I've got to do is drop the rest of the shelves down one. That should be able to get VHS, Mega Drive and Super Nintendo running across the top row, which is where I want it, right? The Super Nintendo wall should lead to the Super Nintendo games. I think what I'm then going to have to do is move the Xbox side. This was a real pain in the backside to get in there. I had to drill holes, rewire it, get it all through, take the plug apart, everything, to get that sign on the shelf. And I think it looks good there, but it's not imperative it stays there. Because what I think, I could theoretically put it down here in between Chief's legs. And that makes sense with it being, you know, Halo. Also, it'd be a nice light to have in the corner of the room down there. So I think I can get it in down there. That then frees up a lot of space. That then gives me this whole stretch for PlayStation 3 games. Because PlayStation 3 games are smaller in their box, I should have to drop these down again. Even though this bit's being dropped down one, PlayStation 3, similar size to Xbox One, would then just run right across with no issues. Then, theoretically, what I'd be able to do is have a whole strip underneath for Xbox 360. So I can have a whole run of Xbox 360 there are going to be some issues throughout. There are going to be some things that have to be rehomed. Toys, PlayStation 1 games, which hopefully will fit up there. Um, certain collector's editions, which are like a big, awkward size. But that's all stuff I'm willing to sacrifice and figure out once I get there. I think that core plan will work. And what that will also do is free up a different thing. So now I'm moving the Xbox One games. They can go down here on the bottom where the Switch is. Switch can go where GameCube is. GameCube can go next to Wii in this space. Yeah, I think that's pretty much the plan. Um, I'll see you in about 20 hours. <laughs> Probably with less hair than I've got now. Wish me luck, Chief. Update time. So far, so good. So, as I spoke about, Switch has moved. GameCube's moved. This has been taken off the wall. Started disassembling it. But I think this has worked really well. It's got the Xbox sign. The backing of the sign just fell in a little bit. So I just need to fix the sign back up. But I think that looks really good. I'm really happy with that. I think at night time as well when it's dark in here, that'll give off a great effect. And it just works having an Xbox light with Chief. Um, I spoke earlier in the video actually, I care about wanting to put a light down there. So I think definitely two birds with one stone with this. Yeah, really happy with that. It looks much better in person than it does on camera, so you'll have to take my word for it. But yeah, it's freed up a load of space. Ah, now, the sort of, now the hard work begins, I guess. Okay, so Super Nintendo is where I want it. PlayStation 3 is where I want it. 
Um, I've now got to start tackling <laughs> all of these Xbox 360 games. Plus I've got to integrate this new pile of Xbox 360 games here and get them alphabetized. Also I've got this pretty much where I want it I think. I've switched around PS2 and Mega Drive and that's allowed me just a few more millimeters so that I can fit PlayStation 1 up there. There's loads of PS2 still to get put away. There's still loads to do. I've been at it for a few hours. Um, what I'm going to do is show no further updates. Next time you see me, hopefully everything's going to be done. The room should be looking better than ever. I'm going to get everything put away, everything tidied, and just get this room perfect. Okay, so just quickly, guys, for those of you that are also thinking about using my little hack for the shelves, um, you only have to measure twice. So this one had already been done. That one had already been done. And obviously, if you just lay a fresh shelf in the middle, you can just line the two up. So what I'm gonna keep doing is keep replacing this middle shelf and then just keep lining them up with the existing measured ones. And yeah, I'm flying through it. Guys, we are done. I am absolutely delighted with how it looks. I don't think this room's ever looked better. It feels finished for the first time. Obviously, I put the game room tour out and I was happy with the room. We'd got it together from scratch, but now it really feels like the room's finished. Obviously, there'll be things getting added down the line. I'm a, I'm a serial buyer and a collector, but yeah, I'm, I've never been happier with how the room looks. Um, I've been at it for about seven hours today. I probably did about five hours yesterday once we got back from Ikea. So it's been a lot more work than I anticipated for saying what, I bought three shelves. Yeah, it, once you move one thing, you have to move everything, right? But I've got a lot of things done that I'd always wanted to do. I just never wanted to do because I know how long it would take but I'm really really happy everything came together perfectly uh, before I show you guys I just want to take this opportunity to sort of look back on the month of January January is always like I think for a lot of people a very busy month uh, and for me it's been crazy um, but very good if you watch the channel you probably noticed I really tried to step up the amount of content I tried to go to two videos a week by doing these vlogs Again, something else which has been more work than I thought. I figured just because I'm doing this stuff anyway, filming it wouldn't be... Like, filming it's okay, but then it's all the other stuff on top of that. The editing, the getting it together, the watching it through. Um, yeah, it's definitely harder work than I anticipated it being. I think I got very used to doing one video a week, right? I've been doing that for a couple of years. And the big difference between doing one video a week and two videos a week is that when you do one video a week, you kind of have a couple of days grace. So you put a video out and you have a couple of days to be able to relax and uh, before you go again. Whereas now, it's just constant. As soon as you finish one video, you're starting the next. If not, you're already thinking two or three videos ahead. It's spinning a lot of plates, but I'm really enjoying it. That This isn't me moaning. Um, no one's forcing me to do it, right? I I'm doing it because I enjoy making the content and I'm surprised that you guys are enjoying it as much as you are. I didn't anticipate the vlogs to get as many views as they're getting i thought it would get significantly less traction than my mainline episode so i want to give a massive thank you to you guys for supporting it telling me how much you're enjoying the vlogs which that's the sort of thing that keeps me doing it right i'm not making these videos just for myself um these are great for me to look on one day with me and my son but ultimately uh, i make these videos for you guys and what i would like to say is if you want to help me out just make sure you subscribe to the channel. I don't like being one of them channels that always asks you to subscribe every five minutes, but I've been looking at analytics and data and all that boring stuff, and it's like pretty, pretty much a 50-50 split. People that watch that aren't subscribed and people that are subscribed. So if you do enjoy the content and you watch regularly, please consider subscribing. It costs you nothing. And ultimately, it shows me that my hard work is working, right? That's like one of the barometers that you use to show that you're doing the right things. And Channel growth is something which inspires you to keep making more content, to keep making better content. So yeah, if you're not subscribed, uh, please consider doing so. It would massively help out the channel. Thank you very much. And then on from YouTube to gaming, right? Which is what we're here for. January has been a great month for me in terms of gaming. I, uh, I got my first ever platinum trophy, finishing Ragnarok. Um, and then I beat, what games did I beat? I did Uncharted 3, right? off the back of the video games you can buy for one pound at CEX video so yeah um, and then obviously as you've seen on this vlog Cuphead which Cuphead's always gonna have a special place in my heart one because I love the game but two because little man bought it me for Christmas and he's been sort of like keeps asking me how you getting on with Cuphead daddy have you finished it yet so yeah and also it's one of the best achievements um, as a gamer I've never professed to be good at gaming so it means a lot for me to have got that finished 
Uh, I'm playing Alice now, Madness Returns. Really enjoying that. Highly recommend that to anybody that's watching. I'm very close to having finished um, Rise of Sinzu on the GameCube, Batman. And I'm very close to finishing um, It Takes Two with Mrs. Ghetto, um, which is nice because she doesn't do much gaming. So it's nice for us to uh, play a game together. So, yeah, it's been a really good month in terms of gaming. Um, as you've been watching the vlogs, you know we've added loads of stuff to the collection. So January all in all has been very tiring. I mean, <laughs> sleep is a, a commodity I've not been getting much of. What, what time are we on now? Half past seven. And I've got to edit this vlog tonight and get all this put together for you guys. But yeah, it's sleep when you're dead, right? So I just want to again take a time to just say a massive thank you to everyone that supported the channel. Thank you for watching this vlog. Uh, I'm going to leave you with the footage of the room. Um, it's not going to be a room tour or anything like that. I'm just going to try and highlight everything that we've done um, or I've done in the past couple of days. But as always, I appreciate you watching. Play your games. Keep it retro. Let me know in the comments what you think of the footage you're about to see. Let me know what you think of the changes in the games room. Appreciate it in a bit. Thank you.